This video is sponsored by Advix. With over 30 years of OE expertise, Advix engineers and manufactures the aftermarket's most advanced, ultra-premium brake products. Visit AdvixAftermarket.com to learn more. So if you're diagnosing a brake master cylinder, there's three things you need to look at. The inputs, outputs, and feedback. When I'm talking about inputs, I'm talking about the brake booster and even the pedal and the driver to make sure that they're operating properly. You should look at these first to make sure that everything is working properly, particularly the brake booster. Make sure it's getting enough vacuum and there's no rips or tears in it that could cause either a hard or a soft pedal. Next, on the other input side, you need to look at the ABS modulator or HCU. On some vehicles that have high miles, the pins and solenoids inside can become stuck when they become stuck, well, the fluid actually will bypass and go around that circuit for the ABS system. When this happens, well, it can cause a brake pull. It can even cause a low brake pedal. So it's critical to diagnose this with a scan tool ahead of time. Next, look at the brake calipers to make sure that they're not leaking, other issues with binding, or even a piston that's cocked inside the bore. Next, you want to look at the brake rotor. If they're experiencing any pulsation, well, it's the brake rotor in some cases. If there's any issues with lateral runout or disc thickness variation, well, that is the feedback that comes back and actuates the master cylinder. So if you look at this as a problem with inputs, outputs, and feedback, you can quickly diagnose if the brake master cylinder has internal issues to where fluid is bypassing around the seals or other issues inside that are related to the condition of the brake fluid. I'm Andrew Markell. Thank you very much.